Good morning. Hello, good morning, how are you? It's time for another oh, rainy journey to work. I've got a CCTV on my house and I was looking at a few of the old tapes and uh, it's amazing how rainy it's been. I was looking on a few days and it's just struck me that the roads have been wet every single day. Not to put the wipers on. There we go. Sorry if that interferes with your picture. I'm in the car with the camera so hopefully I'll only be an inset and you can watch the drive and see what the conditions are like. Ah, like I said the other day, better than watching my double chin. Anyway, how are you? All right? Good? Keeping well? Good, good, glad to hear it. The, uh, this is my first day back. We took two weeks off. We took the last two weeks of January off because uh, the vaccination program's only just starting to roll out. And uh, I've had my first jab. Lou, my nurse, has had her first jab. And uh, let me see if I can get some sort of quiet air on the windscreen. That might work. Let's see how that works. Yeah. So uh, we're sort of going back now because this, this thing is improving slowly. I think they've had like uh, eight or nine people, eight or nine million people have had the vaccination now. I have a population of about 70 and uh, they did 600,000 yesterday. So I mean, you know, it's a big effort and it's ramping up. It's really and you've had the usual press going, oh, you know, the target was too high, you'll never, you're not on target to meet your target, you know, which you never are in the early days because the, obviously it ramps up exponentially, doesn't it, <clears throat> the production. Every day you double your capacity or multiply by 1.5 or something. So it's not a straight line, it's curved. Anyway, the big story over the uh, end of last week and this week is the... Um, ambush carried out by members of the internet the interweb uh, mainly on the reddit subgroup Wall Street bets on the hedge funds now it, and it made the news I mean you know but uh, the trouble is the news that it made was uh, was pretty superficial and by virtue of being superficial, it was pretty wrong, you know? Uh, and the people who don't really understand the story there said, go and write, write up the Robin Hood story. So let me just try and give you like a, a nuanced uh, version of what's going on. Because my belief is that you, you need to model your world, the world around you, and you need to have an accurate model. And the more accurate your model is, the more successful you are because to a certain extent using an accurate model you can begin to predict the future and uh, if you can begin you know can imagine the power that someone's got if they can predict the future uh, so let me just uh, put, put the nuance in your model of what's going on really the government uh, <coughs> being being desirous as Jane Austen would say of being able to print as much money as it likes is has printed uh, a ton of money and if anyone says oh yeah that was in response to covid then it wasn't the history of everything is best uh, understood by observing the contemporaneous sources not not the sources that uh, you know after the event so I need a few lights on it's a bit murky so, when when uh, you're trying to work out what's going on, you have to you have to go back to the people who wrote at the time. You know, whether it's the Bible about Jesus or uh, uh, you know the Romans about uh, the emperors and things like that. You you know you don't. You want ideally you want a bloke who did a, 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 an account on the day 
or the, or the next day, you know, not someone who wrote it up like five years later even. Um, and based on his memory or, or, or uh, bringing together accounts from other people. So, it sort of begs the question, what's the best way to create money? Uh, it's odd to think that, uh, I mean, the way that the money is created is most people think that the Bank of England creates the money and it holds gold in reserve to back it up, which is neither of which is true. The Bank of England um, does uh, monetize the, uh, turn into money, the, the gov government debt, but most money is created by banks, uh, commercial banks. And when you go to a commercial bank and you say, I want a loan, and I want to, uh, I'll put my house up as collateral or whatever, then they will um, create a credit for you in your bank account and they will, they will create a debit on their bank account because it's, it's an asset to you but it's a liability to them. So the whole thing uh, sort of balances out but what happens is uh, they've effectively they've given you some spending power so you go out and you spend all the money and everything so they've created that money as far as you're concerned but then you have to pay it back with interest and as you pay it back the money is uh, disappears again it's sort of it's unmade you know it's, it's neutralized your credit disappears their debit disappears the money disappears so in theory you could say that bearing in mind the amount of money in circulation uh, should should broadly match the amount of goods and services in circulation because money is uh, basically a way of just easing and facilitating oil in the gears of uh, commerce. It just makes it more e easy for someone, two people, to sell and buy goods even if they don't want to sell or buy each other's goods. So they do it through the medium of money. So the amount of money should broadly match the amount of uh, goods and, and you know whatever's required to facilitate trade. Um, and when uh, the economy expands through efficiencies or uh, uh, population increases and things like that, then uh, it may be more money is required because the economy has grown. Oh, petrol. So how do you uh, get how do you get that money? Well. You could argue that it's a good idea for the government to create that money and to spend it into its circulation by carrying out public projects such as uh, roads and bridges and railways and things like that. And in that way, um, although the government gets the privilege of being able to create free money in effect, uh, what they call it, seniorage. Although the government gets a seniorage over the, the new money, at least it's being spent by like a democratic institution that is uh, democratically accountable to the public for what it spends it on. You know, so if the government says uh, we're going to we're going to create a couple of billion pounds and we're going to spend it on a on a rail link. There might be a load of debate about who gets the benefit of the rail link, but the point is that the rail link is supposed to be a public good, and so that's how these public goods get, these big projects get funded, by money creation. Now the problem comes when the government wants to um, create altogether far too much money and gets drunk on the power of being able to create money and starts to spend money on stuff which is not so much of, you know, is only well, when, when they just start to do it, it just run away with it far too much. And they've been spending money uh, incredibly because of the COVID um, pandemic, but they were spending far too much well well before that. And so, and in fact, the financial markets broke down at the end of uh, 2019. Uh, not what we're in. We're in 2021. <laughs> Last year was 2020, and the financial markets broke down at the end of 2019. Yeah, in September the repo market broke down. So we know we know that they, they were going to come a cropper well before COVID, but COVID has given them two opportunities. You know what they say about never letting a, 
a good uh, crisis go unwasted. And so what they've done is they've used it as an excuse to print money to get themselves out of the problem of uh, the fact that they're bankrupt and they can't pay for anything. Um, so they're there and, and also sort of diverted attention from the everyone's like yeah uh, spend you know spend 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 like that uh, 60s pools winner nobody's saying well there are a few people I would say do you think it's an awfully good idea to spend all this money all this I mean this much uh, but those uh, voices are getting drowned by uh, deliberately getting drowned by people who are like uh, Oh, well, we'll worry about that later, you know. We'll spend now, and we'll worry about that later. Anyway, what, all this government spending has meant that... Um, direction of death. All this government spending has meant that uh, markets are uh, artificial. They are rigged. They are not rigged so much as lost touch with reality uh, so we've got the worst pandemic the whole country's been shut down for a year and, and yet the stock market's at an all-time high and you have to ask yourself why is that and the answer is that uh, the people who tend to get benefit most from the new money and the people who are benefiting from from having more money because of the pandemic are doing things like uh, buying uh, fine art fine wine, Pokemon cards, Bitcoin, uh, yachts, stock, <laughs> stocks and shares, you know? So, <coughs> excuse me. So it's a bit like um, you're, you're playing football and you're, you're, you don't, you know, for years and years and years you're playing football, you meet up, you play football, and then one week, uh, you start playing football and the other team doesn't appear to have turned up. And, uh, you know, but you're, you're, you keep losing the match. And the, what you do is you find out that actually you're not playing football, you're playing Quidditch. And the reason why you couldn't see the other players was because they're all flying around on broomsticks. Um, and, and you're still on the ground thinking, you know, playing by the old rules, in effect. And so we don't have a stock market now where uh, the value of the stocks is based on multiples of earnings and uh, the dividends that you can expect to get. Basically, the stock market is, is sky high because they expect the government to carry on printing money and they expect their money to carry on going into the stock market. And so... Uh, Peter Schiff is a good guy to listen to on this. Uh, I might put a link to his one of his talks in the program notes below, but uh, he's, he's spot on on the economy, but he's absolutely rubbish on um, everything else. So don't listen to him on uh, anything else, like uh, Bitcoin or uh, black rights, gay rights, women's rights, <coughs> gun control, <coughs> whenever he Whenever he strays off the beaten path uh, of, of economic uh, modelling, he gets everything seriously wrong. But on the economic modelling, he's absolutely spot on. And so what's all this got to do with Robin Hood? Well, Robin Hood is a, a share trading service. And uh, they attracted a lot of people onto the trading service by giving them commission-free trades. And the reason why they can do that is because um, they sell the share the, the trading data. So if everybody uh, is uh, putting, let's say, there's a big trend in the public to buy Apple stock, for example, uh, what will happen is that they'll say they'll they'll sell all the uh, that data to a trading firm. I know the name of it but the name escapes me anyway but the point is that that, that firm then nips in quick and buys a load of Apple stock <coughs> equivalent to what's being uh, what's being bought and then uh, Robin Hood 
buys it off of them and sells it to the, the mud punters, you know. <coughs> and they're a bit pissed off because they put in an order for uh, Apple stock at $450 and they, and they ended up paying $451. But they're, you know, that's a bit of slippage as far as they're concerned, whereas for these venture capitalists, it's a pound off of every trade that everyone makes. So you're trading against like an invisible opponent, you know, so that's front running you on your trades all the time, making everything you buy more expensive and making sure that everything you sell, uh, you get less for it than you should. But the Robin Hood guys, they don't care, you know, it's a pound here or there. They don't notice it, they don't understand about selling trade data and stuff like that, so arbitrage. So what happens is there's... Um, uh, this discussion group called Wall Street Bets, and uh, you know, from it was really <coughs> from, sorry, most of the time I haven't talked for two weeks. Most of the time, it's all about people just bragging about you know, they've done this on this trade, they make this trade, made a load of money, or should they do this trade, or should they do that trade? Anyway, um, there was a particular firm. It was very heavily shorted and uh, in fact I think something like 130% of their shares were shorted and shorting is basically where you borrow a share from someone you, you rent a share off someone you sell it in the hope that you can later you can buy it back for less and uh, keep the not only the difference between the sale and the purchase price but also um, and use that to pay the, the rent and still end up ahead and you may ask, well, how could they have shorted 130% of the stock? And the answer is that they um, they will have borrowed <coughs> they will have borrowed the shares, sold them, and then uh, and possibly sold them to the person who they borrowed them off, and then and then borrowed them again. So that's how you can get more than 100%. But anyway, um, it happened over this uh, lame lame old uh, retail game store sold package computer games which you know which have been supplemented by um, um, Steam and all the online game stores now so people don't go down to pick up boxes of software anymore it's all done online since internet speeds went up but um, <clears throat> I don't really think it mattered I mean the fact that it was game store was or GameStop or whatever it's called is not really irrelevant. The point was it was very very heavily shorted, and so um, Wall Street bets decided to pile into this stock to force it up. And if you pile into a stock that's very heavily shorted, then what happens is you force everybody who's shorted it to um, uh, make a big loss because they bet it's going to go down and it's going the wrong way. So they're losing money all the time that the price of the stock is above what they uh, bought it for or rented it for and sold it for uh, they're make, making money twice because they're making money because they, they're gonna have to buy the stock back at some point to give it back to the bloke they rented it off and secondly they're, they're paying rent so <clears throat> and uh, shorts tend to be settled on a particular day although you can close out early um, but usually you know uh, it's donkey great loss so uh, this thing went viral in the way that things on the internet do go viral and it's um, <coughs> it's it's interesting in that uh, it's the first time anything like this has happened it's a combination of uh, commission free or, or, or so as far as the punters go commission free stock trading plus a viral internet meme and this stock rose from $20 to about uh, 400 and then settled down around 200 which as far as the shorters are concerned was, was still a nightmare and the shorters have lost billions and everyone's saying oh you know this is it stick it to the Wall Street and this one for the little guys and um, Robin Hood sort of shot themselves in the foot because uh, they, they have margin requirements they're required to uh, pay out if people 
make money and they're, they're required to collect off of people who've lost money but when people lose this amount of money unexpectedly there's an awful lot of um, uh, refinancing has to go on and in the meantime the um, brokers uh, at the clearing house you know the broker which in the case of Robin Hood was the same thing they're required to pay out first and then get the money in later so they took out a, a facility of over a billion pounds to cover uh, their cash flow was effectively they would argue is a cash flow problem or potential cash flow problem and um, what they did was they said that um, temporarily you could only sell these shares you couldn't buy them you could only sell them and then after that they reopened trading I think because they're worried about the lawsuits uh, because obviously saying that you can only sell a share you can't buy it it's going to put a fantastic amount of downward pressure on that uh, share, you know. And and Robin Hood is in bed with a lot of the hedge funds. Because as I say, the hedge funds buy Robin Hood's data. <laughs> so <clears throat> the customers, the punters, are actually a problem for Robin Hood. <laughs> they only need them to generate the data. The... Um, bus has decided to create a traffic jam. I don't know how. Perhaps his gearbox is packed up. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so Robin Hood's biggest customer, basically, are, are, the, are the hedge funds that buy the capital, not the, not the people who buy and trade the stocks. So this all happened on Friday. Everything's going to be netted off over the weekend. I think they have 24 hours or 48 hours to pay up if they've lost a ton of money. Uh, and it won't be in the edge of the hedge funds. But and the point is that everyone's scared now because, as I say, because there's been this disconnect between uh, the market and, uh, and normality, you know, and reality, and what's going on on the financial markets. Um, nobody knows, you know. Is this, is this the end of uh, shorting? Because... If a hedge fund gets into uh, a short position on a stock, and are, is Wall Street bets going to decide to pounce on that? Pounce on that short? Um, and I love it. I mean, this is all uh, par for the course. You know, I mean, this is how Wall Street works. They are absolute carnivores, and uh, it's all about the money. And if they've uh, had to take one up the you-know-what, then that's fine. I'm absolutely happy about that. Because they're quite happy to give it out. And when they get it, they can't complain. Um, the hunters can complain about Robin Hood trying to influence uh, the share price by uh, locking them out of their accounts and telling them they can't take uh, long positions in stocks. And I'm sure they'll suffer for that as well. And, there's a bit of debate about whether Robin Hood's going to go under. But um, anyway, that's the that's the lowdown of it and how it works, and may and also how it fits in with everything else. You know, how it fits in with um, this uh, stock market being at record highs, even though the the economy is at record lows. Anyway, I'm a bit late for work, so I better run. I'll talk to you later. Bye.